Welcome back, Zerka fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And, or if I prefer, because I can't seem to get my branding in order. I'll figure it out. Anyway, we have one last match for tonight. It's going to be Dimefrain versus S3 on Trojan Hills. Dimefrain going for Raw Commander. No, seriously, what are you doing? S3 going for Shieldbot Factor, which makes more sense on this map. But Dimefrain going for Cloaky. Okay, Cloaky on Shield, the classic matchup. Which you don't see very much of these days. And no. ah, I hate that there's some maps that I really need to have camera. Oops, which one is it? No, camera. Get back here. Camera. Where's COC settings? What the hell? Oh, hotkeys, that's why. Settings, camera, camera controls. Smooth mesh scrolling. This is one of those maps you need smooth mesh scrolling on just because of all these little dips. And then there's other maps like Onyx College, which you really should not have that on because it just jumps around everywhere. But anyway, yeah, Dimefrain going for Cloaky Butt Factory, and shields are Etsuri's choice. Both players going pretty quick on the Raiders, though Etsuri going for early dirtbag. Not something I've seen a lot of recently. Not a bad idea for scouting, it's just I haven't seen a lot of it in a while. Looks like Etsuri primarily focusing on defense, though. I mean, they've started in the back. They've gotten a couple bandits pretty much just to hold on to their worker, just to make sure that their convict is alive. At the same time, Dimefrain is already in more of a forward expansion. They're pushing forward in the center of the map, very quickly pushing forward into the center of the map. Commander's already got Q for the entire center center section. Their center corridor, that's the word. The entire center corridor is theirs now. Etsuri is just not contesting it in the slightest. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So apparently Dimefriend was... They were alt-tabbed during this game and they got the wrong commander and it got plopped in a weird spot. So that's, that's why they were off in the distance. That explains it. Okay. Thanks, Dimefront, for being in chat. Anyhow, Etsuri, not really sure what they're doing right now. I mean, they're expanding, they're getting themselves set up economically, which is actually a little bit faster than Dimefront is. Definitely safer than Dimefront, but at the same time, Etsuri isn't going to punish Dimefront. I don't think they are even super aware that Dimefront is going super forward. Oh, wow, Dimefront taking Etsuri's plateau as well. Like, this northeast plateau, usually that's for the north side. Just because of the way that if you start out in this northeast starting point, it's a bit easier to get to, in the same way that Dimefront's going to have an easy time getting to this plateau over to the western side. No, it's not happening. At the same time, Dimefront also coming in with a couple glaives, doing a lot of surprising amount of damage, actually, considering that bandits do out-damage glaives pretty quick. But nice micro there of the glaives, too. Make sure the... Uh, pretty sure that was actually intentional micro of the glaives to make them... Make sure that the stronger glaive is the one taking the damage from the bandit. But either way, the bandits do manage to defend. But... Well, some damage was dealt. Some bandits, though. Actually, not much. Mostly just scouting. Time for just seeing what Etsuri's up to. But Etsuri actually went quite ahead on economy. At the same time, these bandits over the northwest paying off. Etsuri had really been thinking ahead on this one. Setting up the bandits to protect their worker. It might not be enough. Five glaives will beat two bandits. Even with the Lotus in support. And the Lotus will not be up in time. But the bandits are kiting them quite well. So the micro is... Micro is real? No, it's not real enough! The convict... It... Can I get the Lotus in time? It's just one glaive down, the second glaive 65%. Couple more bandits able to get in, so at least the time was bought, and the convict will survive. And oh man, that was too close. And that's at the very least, they do have how much reclaim do they even have? 203 metal reclaim. That's that is nice. They lost four bandits in the pro or five bandits in the pro No, lost two bandits in the process. And a lotus. And a metal extractor. That's actually that's value. It's like two bandits, lotus, that's 240. Yeah, not quite value. It's about it's about even. But again, they're able to defend themselves reasonably well, and they really didn't lose anything in that exchange, is what I'm saying. Or they lost like 20 metal worth of value. And now with the Lotus coming in there on top of the bandits, there is no easy way for it's for Dimefriend to get in and deal any damage. And while Dimefriend is a bit ahead economically, because at the same time they were expanding in the back, Ed's three coming in with a bunch of bandits. There is nothing to stop this. Only a Conjure and a Lotus, and six bandits will tear apart a Lotus, no problem. So the revenge is happening. Ed's three coming in, strong in the revenge. The first bandit is going to be torn to pieces, but that sacrifice was not in vain, as the entire backside expansion here is going to be destroyed. Dimefriend losing the Conjure, losing all the metal extractors, and their main base is pretty well undefended too. Ed's three could theoretically walk right in, but they are choosing not to. Again, Etsuri, as we can see already from the way they've been playing the, the entire game, they are playing it safe. I cannot say I blame them, and they are ahead economically, so I'm not even going to say that it was a bad thing. Really, the main problem right now is that Dimefront is set up right here, and Etsuri has no idea. They have no radar or anything set up in that side of the map, so 
Diamond Friend kind of getting away with just building up over here, and I would not be surprised if a proxy factory came up at some point. Like, Diamond Friend gets around plus 30 metal, just builds a proxy gunship factory right here in this plateau. I don't think they would, but they might do it. I, I don't know. Oh, I see. Okay, Diamond Friend, funny on chat that they were... Because they saw its restarting position was kind of in the center, in the back, they figured this plateau would be much hard, much easier to take because Answer is not starting in the normal like south, northeast southwest type starting spot. But at the same time, Etsuri is able to tear apart the plateau here and the center. So we are, I mean, Diver is kind of seeing that point proven, which is that this expansion here is actually pretty easy to defend considering how far away it is from Etsuri's main base. And the fact that Etsuri is primarily coming out through this little plateau, or this little land, well, hill, land bridge section, whatever, that, that one ramp-ish section. That's where Etsuri is primarily funneling the units through. So this is actually far away from what Etsuri's built up. Now, if Etsuri were to go around the side around here, that'd be a different story. Because they just go around the back and up here, and it might be a little bit harder to defend. But no, I totally see what Diamond Friend's coming from. At the same time, though, Etsuri not fully able to tear apart the base from the western side. At the same time, though, it looks like they did manage to get enough of a view of what's going on inside of Diamond Friend's base that they know that these bandits could actually do something, theoretically. Or at the very least, keeping tabs on what has been built up. Same time, though, Dime Freund, they are managing to get a little bit... A little bit of a terrain advantage. That defense is a nice spot. They have the plateaus taken. A lot of the metal extractors could theoretically belong to them. Like, everything... In the, well, okay, the bandits are kind of stopping the back here. So this is not in Dime Freund's control. But the center basically is. This plateau is. This plateau most certainly is. The expansion back here. It looks like Dime Freund, they're going daring. They're going to what would have been Etsuri's start, po start position if Etsuri had decided to start on the eastern side of their start box. Like, the forward start position on this map is possibly going to be taken by Dying Friend. Etsuri just letting... Not even realizing that's going to happen, actually. I don't think they know. Again, I think Etsuri does have... They don't have enough radar. The radar edge is here. So Etsuri actually has no idea that Dying Friend is going here. Not sure if Etsuri realizes just how much this plateau matters, or in general, how much the eastern side of the map matters. Again, they're playing it safe. And that's one of those things that can be taken advantage of in this game. If you're playing safe in 0k, your opponent can just expand like mad. Now, I respect the fact that Etsuri does have these metal extractors, sorry, these bandits going around the side, making sure the metal extractors are not being built. And the metal extractors are not being built, that means, Dying Freund, at least, they aren't as ahead as they could otherwise be. However, this Reaver, four bandits, one, or five bandits, one Reaver, I think one bandit will survive the exchange. But at the same time, they're coming in a line, so the Reaver might be able to just tear them apart without any issue. Bit hard to say, the bandits... Oh, one of them already goes down. No, the bandits will not be able to do anything. The bandits were in a row if they'd been better microed. Like, if Etsuri had made sure the bandits were always, always, always in a line the entire time, they might have been able to win with one of them alive. But no, that Reaver, no contest in that fight. The Reaver just, just won. Straight up won. Same time, though, center of the map. Again, more forces coming in here, and the thugs just making the Stardust a complete laughingstock. Not able to do much of anything. I mean, it is able to get rid of one or two of the thugs. But still, too many thugs in the back, along with the outlaw slowing everything down. This base has been compl left completely undefended over in the plateau. And while at the same time, Dimefriend is building up over to the northeast, Etsuri is aware of this now. A little bit late, I would say, but they are aware of it, and their economy isn't too bad either. So Etsuri, they can just come back. They're 600 metal behind in terms of attrition. But some good micro here, and the unit composition is going to be able to handle this just fine. Especially a nice micro there, making sure the Lotus is not being able, not able to hit the bandits. is being blocked off by the thugs. Nice use of the shields there by Etsuri. At the same time, there's not a whole lot that Diamond can really do to counter this directly. I mean, they have at least weakened the shields enough that the thugs aren't going to have complete free reign. But the bandits are able to come in here, and the Reaver going down. That's, that's it. There's nothing else that can really be done. Etsuri can just wipe out this entire army if they played this right. To make sure the outlaws are being properly protected. Which they unfortunately are not. So, yeah, this is not being micro as well as it could be. And if it was, it'd be different, but it's not. So this force is kind of dead. I kind of wish Etsuri had just retreated after that point. They've been playing it safe thus far, and it's worked out fairly well. But at the same time, Dimefrain's entire expansion here is being wiped out, and I'm guessing the plateau is going to be next. There is a Stardust that should stop the bandits, although there are 18 bandits, or 15 bandits here. Might not actually be stopped. In all honesty, these bandits might be able to push through the Stardust. It'd be a bloodbath. But it would work, more or less. Oh, and Diamond's Commander going down as well? Looks like, yeah, that's... 
Bandits are able to take out Diamond Friends Commander, and it's also far enough away. It might not even kill the bandits in the explosion. No, it doesn't! Too far away, the bandits survive the explosion on top of that, so Diamond Friends losing their commander inside of Etsuri's base. Etsuri's got some free reclaim to work with right now. Oh, 600 metal reclaim, 20 metal per second on top of that. For 30 seconds, Etsuri could easily take this game. Just... Just build up enough units, build up the right units. The Reaver is coming in here to try to take out all these bandits, and unfortunately the bandits are kind of stuck from the looks of it. Yeah, those bandits are unfortunately stuck in the pit. Bit of a shame there. These convicts might want to hold back. But still, the bandits are able to go around the sides, and again, there's not a whole lot defending. The Lotus will be enough for two bandits. It, these bandits won't be able to do too much. But yeah, Etsuri, they have quite a bit of reclaim to work with. They just need to be able to make that reclaim actually work for them. Ooh, and the Reaver does not go down. I think one more star to push a little bit further forward so they can actually claim the reclaim would be perfect. But Etsuri, under too much fire from the west side of the map, if Diamond Friend is able to push this, that is game. If Etsuri is able to defend this, I think Etsuri can turn this around. But I don't know if Etsuri is going to be able to push this back. They have the Outlaws, they have the Thugs. The Glaives can't really do much, but the southwest expansion, or sorry, northwest expansion is being destroyed. And nothing is really getting in the way of that one. The Lotuses are causing some problems, as are the Pickets. But once the Ronin get in, the Lotuses will go down. And honestly, the Thugs just kind of going in one at a time. There's not much doing, being done there to defend them. And Etsuri, unfortunately, focusing too much on repairing their commander. Not enough on using the metal they have. And accessing metal, despite that they are actually getting their economy very heavily damaged. They are still accessing metal. How? I don't know. But they are. Well, mainly it's just that this is not being used to construct, and Etsuri throws in the towel, and I honestly think that might have been a little bit too soon. Like, ah, small mistake with the caretaker at the very end. There could have been more metal pushed in that could have gotten enough of an army to at least push back. And then with a reclaim in the base, Etsuri could have taken... I, if Dimefrain's force was pushed back, that would have been a lot more reclaim in their base. Etsuri had a bunch of convicts they could take the metal with, get a few more to help push that metal into the factories, and Etsuri could have turned it around. Like, it was not over, but... I think Etsuri just did not think they had a chance on top of that. Like, uh, that attack was coming in there. They were losing a lot of forces. They, I think, if they had the caretaker, like, a minute prior going into the factory, make sure it never was repairing the commander, it would have been fine. But I don't know why the caretaker was repairing the commander. I think that was a default behavior. Anyway, that is that. So, unfortunately, thanks to a lack of construction from, or lack of used metal from Etsuri, and really was lack of used metal, that... That excess was it, and the excess is only at the very end of the game. That excess was the only difference economically between the two players. And a bit of attrition. I mean, dying for attrition was getting a lot better near the end. But that was almost that was dead even until the last couple minutes. And until the last couple minutes, the metal produced was dead even too. In fact, Etsuri was slightly ahead overall. So yeah, Etsuri really had the advantage going forward. It's just this expansion really gave Dying for a lot to work with that wasn't challenged. This construction here with the commander did caused some problems, and Dying Flame didn't, or sorry, Etsuri didn't really seem to know how quite to deal with a Ronin Reaver Ball. Which, to be fair, is kind of tough, but, I mean, there are, I guess, bandits working against the Reavers, and the Ronin, Thuggla helps with the Ronin somewhat, or Thugs help with the Ronin somewhat. I mean, rogues exist too. Those are really what you're supposed to use against the Reavers. Actually, I think Thug Rogue. Thug Rogue would have done it. I think. Yeah, we would have gotten rid of Reavers, would have pressured the would have pressured all of the Ronin, and then from there if, once the Reavers go down, or even are just thinned out, you send in a bunch of bandits, and bandits take care of all the Ronin. So it's totally doable, and again, Etsuri had the economy it was really just down to unit production, or unit the amount that was actually used for producing units, the composition of the units produced, and exactly how they were placed in micro. That was the main difference, but macro-wise, the players were at a dead heat. So Etsuri could have taken that with just a slight difference in metal in unit composition or in their or in the micro. Anyway, that is gonna be it for me tonight. Actually, kind of a standard length stream now that I think about it. I normally do three games. So we are gonna have the ending screen and that it. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a good night. I will see you next time. Probably still Monday. I I think I'll still be good enough on Monday to be able to play. Play by ear. I don't know. That's the schedule. But we'll see. For anyone watching on YouTube, Monday is when I tend to stream my playing of Zero K, which I don't usually put on YouTube because I don't... I don't know. Not really any good reason. I just figure YouTube is more appropriate for the cast. The streams... I don't know. It's just more of this freeform thing. And I... 
eh, I don't want to get into the history of it, but the point is, is that I feel like the casts are more appropriate on YouTube and the streams of me playing my own play are more appropriate for Twitch. For just Twitch. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.